tracks today. Yeah. Yeah. I need them bands, running up fast, stuffing them shits in the safe. Got me a spot out the way. Nigga just trying to be safe. Leaving that house with a glizzy, nigga. Let's get into sports talk. Or I think it's based on, on on being, you know, selectively oblivious to some things. Let's be very, very clear here. Kevin Durant is a really, really good guy. Yeah. And he's a smart guy. Kevin Durant is also somebody that just complains a little bit too much about the very things he benefits off of. Kevin Durant will have you believe that it's all right just to play basketball and do nothing else. But that's not what Kevin Durant's doing. Kevin Durant is a basketball player, a superstar. He's an entrepreneur. He's a businessman. Um, he's a lot of different things. Kevin Durant is worth over $300 million, and I think I'm being kind there. And so he's not lying, and he is a human being. He has a right to hate the NBA someday, the bureaucracy, the politics that come with it. That's all of us. We get all of that. But he don't like it because it's like y'all hold him to a whole bunch of a standards. Like he get who he is, but you can't have no privacy because of who your name is. Off the court, they all in your business. It's no privacy. It's like you gotta walk on eggshells. Why playing in this league? They looking at you, oh, we give you a hundred million dollars contract. It's like they, it's like it's going to be hush money, and you're not supposed to say anything. He's a human being that can vocal himself. He felt out of source because it's like I have to be quiet and not say anything. He, you know, when he starts talking about, um, if you listen to his comments about being in Golden State and how he was just separate and apart from the other guys eventually because he wasn't one of them. He wasn't drafted by them the way the other guys were. Well, you were drafted by Oklahoma City, but you left. And then when you leave, you talk about, I can never, you know, get over there, how they treated you. Well, how are they supposed to treat you? They're fans. And you said, I don't want to be a part of you any longer. Of course, that's going to be the case. And so... He just sometimes, the reason why I really have a problem with him is because sometimes he just seems to be separated, not from knowing the reality of things, but accepting it and understanding that it's applicable to everybody, not just you. If I, if I played for a team and I left, their fans are not going to like me. You know what I'm saying? If I'm making all of this money playing the sport, then there are responsibilities that I'd rather not have that are going to come with it. We get it. He seems to want the joy of everything without accepting, you know, the baggage that comes along with it. And I think that when you look at certain guys, certain superstars that have been in this league in the past, that are in this league now, there is an acceptance of the pros and the cons yeah, that come with is everything given, must be tested. more so than it's accepted from him. So it's not really a problem like I'm dogging him in any way. It's just that I just wish he accepted it a little bit better, Max. Um, I have no problem with the basic position KD is taking, which is this. I thought the most interesting part of the whole article was if someone asks me a direct question, about my past, I'm not going to run from it. I'm going to answer it. Every time I do, you guys are saying, you make a big deal about it. I can't help that. I'm going to answer. I love that KD keep telling the truth. But that's not my real response to this article. This is not just a puff piece. It's a piece of commercialism. Look, I understand this is also a piece of commercialism. We're selling cars and sneakers and everything you watch during the commercial, right? But when the, com when the piece of commercialism is embedded in the very content, the way it is with, in this article on KD, in the Wall Street Journal, guys, I'm... Now he understand he's a businessman. He understand who he is. But at the same time, that's why certain players retire 
and be private. It's like he ain't enjoying it. Yeah, the money is good, but he can't enjoy it. Like now, soon as he say something, nobody don't like it. Since when you can't tell it? Well, since when a grown man can't vocal how he feel? We ain't know what's going on in these locker rooms. He do. He just letting them know. It, it's something we don't know. And he's speaking up, but he can't, cause he a bad guy for doing it. Oh, from this article, as though I was reading a piece in GQ, I know how much those leopard Nike shorts cost and the shirt he was wearing. It's $100. You know why? Because there were 15,000 pictures and every time he was wearing one of those and then also maybe his own clothes. I don't know. Does that mean he has his own line of clothes? But every time it's this costs $100 from Nike, this costs 100 I, I didn't see like the actual, I had a printout of it. Could you click on a link and purchase the stuff there? Because that's what it felt to me. Yeah. Like they were selling clothing. And so... I would like to know what is the relationship before this piece came out and what conversations were had between KD's people, Nike, and the Wall Street Journal. That's what this feels like to me. It's a big bunch of nothing except that. This is KD who is very interested in, at, in being a mogul, who wouldn't be, and certainly being perceived that way, the way LeBron is, right? It elevates him and distances him from the rest of the NBA doing something, a piece that makes him out to be that kind of figure and also sells, you know, he just signed with Nike through what, 2024? And sells Nike products. Like, that's what was happening in this so-called article. So, like, that, so that's my big thought about it. The other thing that occurred to me, though, is it's not as though KD doesn't have anything left to prove. He has never been the guy who got to a place and it wasn't already a championship caliber team, led them to a championship. And to, and to me, that was kind of lost in the article. Like, the most important story about KD right now is the question. Even if his goodest days are behind him, can his greatest be in front of him? Can he lead a team to a championship as unquestionably the best player, biggest star on a team that's not won a championship before he got there? You know, I've often argued with you about that point. Because I think that KD is a superstar. I think that he's probably the best player in the world when healthy. He's sensational to me. Um, but I've got news for you. Since you and I have had that discussion, several people have come up to me. A couple of people that used to play in Oklahoma City. Several people that are incredibly familiar with the history of KD um, in Oklahoma City. And it's interesting that we talk about him and what he supposedly wasn't. I never viewed it that way. He's the best player on the Oklahoma City Thunder, even though Russell Westbrook is that dude. The bottom line is KD is what got you there, et cetera, et cetera. And I asked somebody, I said, I don't understand. They said, Stephen A., if you're going to get on KD about anything, you've gotten on him about the wrong thing. They said, when he was in Oklahoma City, he wasn't viewed as the leader. I was like, what were you talking about? I mean, I know it's just because you... That's why he left. No long, Westbrook is a dominant player, MVP. But he was there before Westbrook. That means y'all drafted Westbrook to be y'all best player. So we didn't let you walk. We got our best player. And KD walk because I want y'all best player. So that means you had to follow Westbrook lead. So he left. And he wanted to see what Oklahoma City was going to do. Were they going to win on Westbrook? No. They've been at the first round for the last three years. They view him as the second best player on that team. So he felt some type of way. I need to get out of there. I'm not your best player. It's Westbrook. Best player don't mean lead. He said he was the best player. He said, but it was hard for Russell Westbrook to follow him because KD, the man that you see right now, was a boy back then. And Russell Westbrook came in a man. Came in. Russell Westbrook, you know, write his own checks, handle his own responsibility, do all of these things himself. So to go to Russell Westbrook 
and to ask him to follow that God. Russell Westbrook was a man looking at you like you're asking him to follow a boy. This is what they said. I'm, I'm quoting. I'm not telling you who, but I'm quoting folks that said that, and it was more than one person. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to